what's up guys welcome back to my channel for those of you who don't know me my name is king dc and this is the channel where i bring you the latest news on all your favorite manga and anime well most of the times now today we'll be talking about one piece chapter 1076 and many of its interesting moments but really what i want to share with you guys are my thoughts on this chapter The chapter picks up from the last issue where Zoro and Luffy are offered to team up with Luchi and Kaku. Zoro asks them if they would handcuff them again once the Seraphims are stopped, to which Kaku agrees and honestly I love the way Luffy just believes him, it just shows just how innocent this guy is and it reminded me of the time when he formed an alliance with Lord Punk Hazard. But getting back to the chapter, Esok attacks and Luffy and Zoro save the CP0 agents again. At this point Shaka wanted to get an understanding of what their mission is, at which point Luchi reveals that his main goal is to exterminate the seven Vegapunks, making Kaku angry and I understand Kaku's anger in this situation. Nami screams from a nearby room and they all conclude that all of the four Seraphims are wreaking havoc throughout the entire island. Luffy asks for the handcuff key and provokes Luchi and honestly at this point I can't recognize Luchi anymore, it seems Luffy is quite the bad influence on him. They get attacked by S Bear which they eventually seem to defeat. Meanwhile, Dr. Vegapunk is seen handcuffed and with bruises on his body. It is revealed that he is with the disappeared cypherpoor agents from CP5, CP7 and CP8. The agents say that they have been inside this prison for the last two months, but but then again, this this is quite an interesting revelation. At first, I actually thought that there was an imposter of Vegapunk, but we haven't exactly seen what happened between Bonnie and Vegapunk since the time that she walked into Kuma's memories. Now, the story is taking quite the turn, and as fans have been predicting, the traitor truly is a Vegapunk. But the thing is, someone must definitely be behind the rogue punk, because it makes no sense for any of them to do this. Might it have something to do with the arrival of one of the Gorosei? I think this will be one of the most heart-crenching reveals in One Piece history. Or maybe I'm just saying that to add more, you know, to add more tension to the situation. As the chapter progresses, one of the Cypherpoor agents says that they were at Egghead Island for a normal inspection, but when they were leaving, they were attacked by the weaponized sea monster and were brought to this prison. They thought that old man Vegapunk was behind it all, but since he himself is inside, they figure there has to be someone else. Old Vegapunk is surprised thinking that everything has been happening under his nose and realizes that the traitor is the one leaking to the world government about their research for the road Poneglyph. Nearby Egghead Island, we see marines talking on the radio that they have over a hundred ships reaching Egghead Island. The anticipation for this entire chapter is quite phenomenal. We can't wait to see what will happen once, well, the Gorosei arrives. For the first time, in One Piece history, we finally learned the name of one of the Gorosei, and this is just really, really amazing. And to see Kizaru in this type of situation, it gives us an idea of the type of man he is. He doesn't necessarily have a sense of self, he kind of just does whatever he's told. So, the narration of One Piece chapter 1076 then shifts to a small bar at a port on an island somewhere in the New World. Or, I don't know if Oda is making a joke or something, because this is so trippy. The bar is filled with joy as a child asks someone to take him with them. Similar to Luffy asking Shanks as a child. The certain someone is revealed to be Shanks, who refuses the giant kid from taking him as Shanks tells him that he would never take a hot-headed child like him. Really now guys, this is a bit much. So does that mean that Shanks just goes around acting like a cool grown-up to kids and giving them hats? Well, I feel like that sounded wrong. The bar lady cheers the kid, saying that he would make other captains jealous, but the latter says that he won't let go as he really looks up to Shanks, referring to him as boss or chief. As this conversation goes on and the folks have fun, Rockstar budges in inside the bar telling Shanks that someone is attacking them and mostly fighting with their youngsters, but it seems like it is going to turn into a full on battle. Now Shanks says that they were just about to leave and cannot comprehend whether it is good timing or bad timing, if you ask me it's bad timing. He further adds that they just lost track of time catching up with their old friends who they presume to be dead. Beckman adds to the conversation saying that the enemy will be pissed at Shanks for making them wait, to which Lucky Roo says that the enemy might be angry at him and not Shanks. This is, this is, this is actually getting quite quite interesting guys. Now, Shanks orders to set sail exciting everyone at the bar. He adds that he won't let this island be part of the battle. Thus he is setting sail and asks some giant companions such as Drogi and Brogi to lend a hand. The red hair pirates and the citizens of Elba are excited to go for a fight. Now if you ask me I think this is somewhat of a homage to the tradition of viking lore in which these guys well they kind of represent the entire lore of the vikings because back in the 
that days vikings praised war they praised this type of action and these guys are just what we expected Drogi and Brogi agreed to lend a hand to shanks referring to him as a brother shanks asked rockstar to convey a message to the enemy who is captain kid which is either leave his lord poneglyph or risk fighting him now the thing is eustace kid once tried to fight against shanks but the truth is he could never even get past Shanks' men. In this chapter, it has been revealed that the man who actually took Eustace Kid's arm was Ben Beckman. Because Lucky Roo responded to Beckman's statement on how Kid wouldn't forgive Shanks for keeping them waiting at the battlefield by saying, You can't talk, Beck. Really think he's the only one they're mad at? But what's funny about this whole chapter is that Kid actually thinks he can win against Shanks. I really don't think Kid is that dumb. I don't actually know. I, I don't actually know. Is he brave? Is he stupid? Or maybe both. But the thing is, I have this idea as to say Kid will not actually face off against Shanks. Because remember guys, Kid actually won a fight against Big Mom. And if you remember this, Big Mom is the greatest enemy that the Giants have. So maybe in the eyes of the Giants, Kid will seem to be a hero. Hero. But yet again, Shanks has been revealing some sides to his personality and character that have been well questionable, and we've started to kind of see him in a new light. His motivations are solemnly focused on, well, getting to the One Piece, and we're finally understanding why he's one of the emperors. He has that selfishness within him that truly makes a Yonko. Now, Eustace Kid's right hand man, Killer, warned him that the last time they fought against the Red Hair Pirates, he simply lost an arm, but this time they might actually kill him. To be honest, the story has taken a turn I never so coming. Oda has revealed that Dorian and Brogy are allies of Shanks. And honestly, this is what makes me ask this question. Does Kid really think he can win? So many things are happening because Blackbeard has sparked his own war with Garp. But I still stand by my theory that he's doing it to get to Luffy. It's likely that he wants Garp's memories of the God Valley incident by using pudding. That's, a, that's not one of my theories. That's actually a theory I picked up from the One Piece community. Because maybe in his memories lies the final piece required to fulfill his master plan. Well, thank you guys for watching and well, this has been a confusing video, I understand, mainly because some of these parts were not scripted. I, I don't really like to script my videos, I like to just talk to you guys, you know, one on one or, or one on or a million, hopefully, crossing my fingers. With that said, guys, please share your thoughts with me in the comment section. Tell me what you guys think about this entire ordeal. Is Luffy going to square up against both Blackbeard and Shanks in the end? Or maybe I'm just speculating.